Welcome to the 8th lecture on sequence of real numbers. Today we will discuss subsequences. So first we will see the definition of a subsequence of a sequence along with examples and then we will study subsequential limits. So we will define limit superior and limit inferior of a sequence of real numbers. Sometimes we call them upper limit and the lower limit of a sequence. And at the end, we will see a theorem which states that a sequence is convergent if and only if all of its subsequences converge to the same limit. So here is the definition of a subsequence of a sequence. You consider a sequence of real numbers. Let's say it is x sub n. And then you consider another sequence that is strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. So the terms of this sequence are natural numbers and this is strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. Then you consider x sub r sub n. It is called a subsequence of xn. For examples, if you consider a sequence whose terms are x1, x2, x3, the following are some subsequences of this sequence. For example, if you collect the collection of all even index terms, let's say it is x2, x4, x6, if you consider this, then you get a sequence and that is a subsequence of this sequence. If you consider the collection of all odd indexed uh, terms, let's say x1, x3, x5, so on, so this is another subsequence of this sequence. And you can consider collection of these terms, uh, it is indexed by n square, so x1, x4, x9, x16, so on. This is another subsequence of this sequence. You may consider this collection of x2, x4, x8. So this is indexed by this 2 power n. And you can see this 2 power n, this is a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. So x sub 2 power n, this gives a subsequence of the sequence. And you may consider collection of these numbers omitting x3, x6, x9, so on. So this gives another subsequence of this sequence. Now here is the notion of limit superior and limit inferior. So limit is a very useful tool in analysis, but it may not always exist. We have seen some examples of sequences for which limits uh, do not exist. It is useful to have some notion of limit that makes sense for any sequence. Hence we introduce the limit superior, in short we call it limit sup and limit inferior, in short we write limit infimum. It need not be same as supremum of xn and limit infimum you should not uh, confuse it with infimum of a sequence. So it is another notion, we call it limit superior and it is defined in terms of subsequences of a sequence. Okay? And so here is the remark that limit may not always exist but limit superior and limit inferior always exist. So here is the definition. Let xn be a sequence of real numbers. A real number L, it is called a subsequential limit. From the name it is clear that why we call it subsequential limit. So L is called a subsequential limit of this sequence if there exists a subsequence x sub r sub n of xn which converges to L. So L is called a subsequential limit if there exists a subsequence which converges to this real number L. Then L is called a subsequential limit. The greatest value of all subsequential limits of this sequence we give a name and that is called the limit superior. So the greatest subsequential limit of Xn is said to be the limit superior or sometimes we call it upper limit of this sequence. It is denoted by limit of n tends to infinity xn. And we, the least subsequential limit of xn, we give another name that is called the limit inferior. 
sometimes we call it lower limit of xn what is that so it is the least value among all subsequential limits of this sequence xn and it is denoted by lim inf of xn as n tends to infinity so limit may not exist but lim suf and lim inf always exist okay so it is it follows from the definition itself of course it can be plus minus infinity you should include that case also and lim inf that also can be plus minus plus or minus infinity so here is boljano oester's theorem it states that if you consider a bounded sequence of real numbers then it has a subsequence which is convergent so every bounded sequence of real number has a convergent subsequence okay we skip the proof of boljano oester's theorem because it is something non trivial but here we can see an example so you consider a sequence whose nth term is given by sign of n pi by 2 so first term is 1 second term is 0 third term is minus 1 0 1 0 minus 1 so on so you denote this sequence by x sub n so this is your sequence then if you consider the collection of all even indices uh, terms then it is just this sequence and this is a subsequence and this subsequence it is convergent okay and it converges to 0 so 0 this is a subsequential limit for this sequence and what about this subsequence the subsequence given by x sub 4n minus 3 so I should uh, write that 4n minus 3 this gives a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers so x sub this thing it gives a subsequence and this subsequence is given by this constant uh, sequence so this is convergent subsequence and it converges to 1 so one is another subsequential limit of this sequence what about this subsequence in this case we are getting constant uh, sequence it is given by minus 1 so and this is also convergent subsequence and it converges to minus 1 so minus 1 is another subsequential limit what about this one collection of all odd indices terms so x sub 2n minus 1 so this subsequence you can see that it is given by this sequence so first term is 1 second term is minus 1 third term is 1 so on so this is a divergent subsequence may be converge so a subsequence may be convergent or divergent so in this case this subsequence it is divergent moreover one can prove that 0 1 and minus 1 are all the subsequential limits so if you consider l that is not equal to 0 1 and minus 1 then you can prove that l cannot be the limit of a subsequence so using epsilon n uh, condition one can verify that you can have an epsilon neighborhood of l which uh, does not contain any elements of this sequence if l is not equal to 0 1 or minus 1 then l cannot be the limit of a subsequence of this sequence and from these subsequences we can see that 0 1 and minus 1 these are subsequential limits so one can prove that these are all the subsequential limits and what is lim suf by definition this is the greatest value among all subsequential limits so greatest value among these subsequential limits is just 1 so lim suf of this sequence it is 1 what is lim in this is the least value among all subsequential limits of this sequence and this least value it is minus 1 and what is boljano oester's theorem it says that if you consider a bounded sequence of course you cannot conclude anything about uh, the convergence and divergence of that sequence but this theorem it says that if you consider a bounded sequence of real numbers then it can have a subsequence which is convergent the boljano oesters theorem is not saying anything about unbounded sequences so an unbounded sequence may or may not have a convergent subsequence so here are some examples you consider this sequence whose nth term is given by n plus minus 1 power n uh, times n 
So first term is 0, second term is 4, third term is 0, 8, so on. This is an unbounded sequence because it is not bounded above. But it has a subsequence which is convergent. So if you consider the collection of all even indices terms, so you, you will get constant sequence whose and, and this converges to 0. So it has a subsequence which converges to 0. Okay. And of course, this is unbounded uh, sequence. So lim sup it will be plus infinity in this case and lim inf it is 0. Okay. So you can prove that 0 is the only subsequential limit here and of course it can be plus infinity. So 0 and plus infinity if you include that these are all the subsequential limits of this sequence. So lim sof of this sequence it is plus infinity, lim inf it is 0. What about this sequence? So the sequence n is unbounded and it has no convergent subsequence. It is so infinity that is the only subsequential limit of this sequence. In that case lim sof it is plus infinity and lim inf that is also plus infinity. Here is our main theorem for this lecture. So it states that if a sequence xn converges to L, then every subsequence of xn converges to the same limit L. Okay, And from here as a consequence, we get that all of its subsequences converge to the same limit. So if L is the limit here, then xn converges to L. So this is if and only if condition. Okay. So this part it is this part it is something trivial because if all of its subsequences converge to the same limit L, so Xn that that itself is a subsequence of this sequence. So it con it is convergent sequence. And so we have to prove this part only. Okay. So let's prove this part. So here is the proof. So consider uh, a subsequence x sub r sub n this is a subsequence of xn where this xn this is a convergent sequence and it converges to l and we are considering a subsequence of this sequence where this r sub n this is a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers so that is the definition of a subsequence of a sequence we have to prove that this subsequence it is also a convergent sequence and it converges to l okay we want to verify that this l it satisfies epsilon n condition for this sequence this subsequence so you consider an arbitrary positive real number epsilon so for this epsilon we want to uh, prove that there exists a natural number n such that beyond that natural numbers all the terms of this subsequence lie in this neighborhood so we will use the fact that limit n tends to infinity xn is L. So L satisfies epsilon n condition for this sequence and this is a subsequence of this. So since limit of xn it is L, so for this epsilon there exists n prime such that beyond this n prime all the terms of xn lie in this neighborhood. Then we want to prove this fact for this subsequence. So since R sub n, this one, this is a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. So there exists a natural number n such that beyond that natural number, if you consider the terms of this sequence, it is greater than n prime. Okay. So n prime is some fixed value here. Okay, we got this n prime because of this thing. So, f and, and since this is a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers, we can get a stage that is n such that beyond that stage, all the terms for this sequence it is greater than n prime. And therefore, for all the natural numbers beyond this n, if we consider the terms for this subsequence. So since Rn is greater than n prime, x sub Rn, so this term it lies in this range. 
So L minus epsilon, this is less than X sub R sub N, this, that is less than L plus epsilon. So we, we are getting that X sub R sub N, this term for the subsequence minus L, it is less than epsilon for all N greater than N. And thus, we are verifying that L, it, it is satisfying the epsilon N condition for this subsequence. So the limit of this subsequence it exists and it is same as L. So in this way we are proving that if a sequence is convergent and if it converges to L then whatever subsequence you consider it is also a convergent sequence and it converges to the same limit L. And as a consequence we have this fact that a sequence is convergent if and only if all of its subsequences converge to the same limit. L. So you consider uh, this sequence, of course this is divergent sequence, but this gives a subsequence and it is a convergent subsequence, it converges to 1. This gives another subsequence and it is also a convergent subsequence and it converges to minus 1. Sequence. So it follows from the theorem that the sequence minus 1 power n, it is divergent. Why? theorem is saying that if a sequence is convergent and suppose it converges to L then every subsequence of Xn it converges to the same limit L. But here we are having two subsequences so that this subsequence it converges to 1 and this subsequence it converges to minus 1. So this sequence it cannot be a convergent sequence. So this is a divergent sequence. Moreover, here one can prove that minus 1 and 1, these are all the subsequential limits for this sequence. So if you consider L that is not equal to minus 1 or 1, then one can prove that L cannot be the limit of a subsequence of this sequence. Because you can have, uh, you can find an epsilon so that uh, you cannot have any terms for this sequence in that epsilon neighborhood of L. So minus 1 and 1, these are all the subsequential limits of this sequence. And therefore, lim sup of this sequence, it is 1 and that will be minus 1. So this is your example, first example. And in second example, you can consider this. So in the assignment, I have asked that prove that this sequence, it is divergent. So how you can prove that? So you just consider two subsequences which converge to two different limits. So then using the theorem here, you can conclude that this sequence, it cannot be a convergent sequence because you can have two subsequences whose limits are different. So this sequence, it is divergent sequence. For example, you can consider the collection of all even indices terms that gives a sequence, uh, subsequence which converges to 1 by 2 and you can have another subsequence by considering the collection of all odd indices terms and that is that gives another subsequence which converges to minus half. Okay. And here is another example. So it says that the sequence uh, this so it converges to 1 and therefore whatever subsequence you consider for this sequence that subsequence it is also a convergent sequence and it converges to the same limit 1. So you can consider this subsequence okay. So terms are given by this and it converges to 1 only. You can say limit for this sequence because this sequence converges to 1 and you consider any subsequence it, it, it is also convergent and it converges to 1. Okay. So, one is the only subsequential limit and in this case lim suf of this sequence that is 1 as well as lim in that is also 1. And in fact, it is a theorem, it says that you consider a bounded sequence xn, it converges to a limit L if and only if this lim suf of xn, it is same as lim in of xn. So, if xn is convergent, suppose it converges to L then one can verify that both are same and both are same as L and in fact converse is also true. 
So suppose limb soup is same as limb in and suppose both are same as L. Then basically it is saying that all so you have only one subsequential limit that is L. Okay. So basically this statement it is saying that all the subsequences of this sequence converge to the same limit L and this proves that Xn is converging. Okay. So in other words a bounded sequence Xn converges to a limit L if and only if it has only one subsequential limit namely it is L. But in general if you consider uh, a sequence Xn you can always have this inequality. So limb inf of Xn it is always less than or equal to limb sup of Xn. But if you have equality here then it is equivalent to say that your sequence is convergent and it converges to that value. Okay, It is because of this theorem. And then you have another theorem that limb sup and limb inf uh, we have defined in terms of subsequential limits and we know that these two uh, things uh, always exist if you include that it can be plus or minus infinity. But here are some other interpretation. So how you can think limb sup? So we can think limb imp sup and limb inf in this OS. Okay. So for a sequence Xn, the limit superior is same as this value. And what is this? So it is just infimum of supremum of this thing. So supremum of Xk, Xk plus 1, so on. So here collection of all the terms uh, after this K. Okay. So K onwards you are collecting all the terms and you are taking supremum of that and then uh, this is some number and this so and then you are taking infimum of collection of all those things. Similarly the limit inferior it is same as this value and what is that? So it is so here you consider the collection of so k onwards you are collecting all the terms so xk uh, comma xk plus 1 so on and then you are taking infimum of this value so you are getting so for each k you are getting this number and then you are considering supremum and this supremum it is varying over k over all the natural numbers okay so this value it is same as this limb n so these are limb sup of xn and this one it is another interpretation for limb inf of xn okay